We have tissue sections on Xenium slides. Now we will review the Xenium sample preparation protocols. There are two separate workflows for the Xenium assay, depending on your tissue type. For fresh frozen tissue, we will perform tissue fixation and permeabilization. This is performed by immersing the slide in a series of slide mailers. Two slide mailers are shown here for illustrative purposes. Additional slide mailers are required. Please refer to the Xenium in situ for fresh frozen tissues fixation and permeabilization demonstrated protocol. For FFPE tissue, we will perform deparaffinization and decrosslinking. This is performed by immersing the slide in a series of Coplin jars or staining dishes. Two Coplin jars are shown here for illustrative purposes. Additional Coplin jars are required. Please refer to the Xenium in situ for FFPE deparaffinization and decrosslinking demonstrated protocol. After performing these steps, we will proceed to the Xenium in situ gene expression, probe hybridization, ligation, and amplification user guide steps. In both the fresh frozen and FFPE workflows, we recommend processing two slides at one time throughout the entire Xenium assay workflow. In this video, we will highlight cassette assembly and pipetting techniques that are used throughout the Xenium protocols. During the fresh frozen workflow, this is performed after fixation and permeabilization as part of the demonstrated protocol. During the FFPE workflow, this is performed after deparaffinization and before decrosslinking as part of the demonstrated protocol. First, we will demonstrate the Xenium cassette assembly. We have tissue in the imageable area on the slide. The slide has previously been prepared as part of the Xenium workflow. The Xenium cassette consists of two pieces, the top and bottom of the cassette. Place the top and bottom halves of the cassette on the bench. Wipe the slide dry outside of the sample area with a laboratory wipe. Place the Xenium slide with the tissue side facing upwards into the bottom half of the cassette. Ensure the label is facing toward the bottom of the cassette. Press the slide down into the grooves of the bottom half of the cassette until it sits firmly in place. Secure the outer clips on the top half of the cassette with the outer tabs of the bottom half of the cassette on both sides. Press firmly on the top of the cassette until it clicks shut and the two halves are flush against each other. We are ready to add reagents into the assembled cassette. Next, we will demonstrate dispensing and removing reagents in the slide cassette. After the slide cassette is assembled, we can dispense reagents into the well. Dispense and remove reagents along the side of the well without touching the slide surface, tissue sections when applicable, and without introducing bubbles. Always cover the sample area completely when adding reagents to the well. A gentle tap may help spread the reagent more evenly. Next, we will demonstrate removing liquid from the cassette. Slightly tilt the cassette while removing the reagent. Place the pipette tip on the bottom corner edge of the well. Remove reagents along the side of the well without touching the tissue sections when applicable and without introducing bubbles. Remove all liquid from the well in each step. Ensure that the sample does not dry out as you move between protocol steps unless specified in the user guide. Prior to incubation on a thermal cycler, we will apply cassette lid to the slide cassette. Place the Xenium cassette flat on a clean work surface. Hold the Xenium cassette lid with index and middle finger on two upper tabs and thumb on the lower clip. Hook the two upper clips into the two holes on the top of the cassette. Push the lid down until the lower clip clicks into place. Next, we will demonstrate incubation on a thermal cycler. The assay workflow requires multiple incubations on a thermal cycler using a Xenium-specific thermocycler adapter. Place the sealed slide cassette on the thermocycler adapter. Then close the lid 
and follow the incubation protocol in the user guide. Most steps in both sample workflows are performed with the slide lid on and the thermal cycler closed. However, there are a few exceptions. Refer to the user guide for best practices on thermal cycler incubations as it is critical for optimal assay performance. After incubation on the thermal cycler, we will remove the slide lid. Securely hold the cassette on a flat surface. With the other hand, push on the top of the two upper tabs with index and middle fingers. Use your thumb to push in on the lower clip. While maintaining inward pressure, pull upward with your thumb until the lower clip disengages. Ensure that no liquid splashes out of the well. Slide lids will sometimes be reused, unless a step is sensitive to reagent carryover and the slide lid should be discarded. Please refer to the user guide for details. The best practices shown in this video will be used to perform key steps in the Xenium assay workflow. Key steps in the Xenium assay workflow include probe hybridization, post-hybridization washes, which serve to remove any unbound probes and decrease off-target effects, probe ligation, and amplification. After this, we perform autofluorescence mitigation to make sure signal intensity is optimal for imaging and nuclei staining which is necessary for tissue visualization in the overview scan. Next, we will review the autofluorescence quenching protocol. The autofluorescence mitigation step in the assay workflow utilizes a 10x proprietary quencher. Dilute the autofluorescence mix as detailed in the user guide. The diluted quencher is purple in color. Dispense the quencher into the well. Seal the slide cassette with a cassette lid. A secure seal will help minimize solvent evaporation. Carefully move the sealed slide and incubate in the dark for 10 minutes at room temperature. After incubation, remove the quencher from the well. Wash the slide to remove any excess reagent. For this video, we will only perform a single wash. However, the protocol requires two additional washes. Wash samples thoroughly after the autofluorescence quenching incubation. A quenched sample shows a uniform light purple color on the tissue surface. We previewed the assay protocol best practices. Next, we will provide an overview of the Xenium Analyzer.